Once again, thank you for joining us. Welcome to our program this evening. Tonight, we are going to hear from Megan Frey. She has spent this summer as the captain of the Cutter Owl out of Camden. She is a merchant mariner, and she is also the founder of a nonprofit called Ocean's Dream, which we'll hear a little bit about later on in the program. Um, and now, without any further ado, I would love to turn the program over to Megan. Megan, you can go ahead and share your screen. I, I was a farmer before I found the sea and uh, was living on this island that you're looking at, the Isle of Egg in the Western Hebrides. Um, so being an island surrounded by water, my dear friend Simon, he invited me to sail down to Ireland uh, for about a three week journey. And I thought, okay, sure, um, that sounds good. I'd never been on a sailboat before, why not? I'll give it a go. I'll make sure that the vegetables and the animals are tended to and uh, and off we went. So I was 29 when uh, when we went for that sale. And uh, honestly, I've never looked back. <laughs> um, the sea bit me hard. So that's that's how it started. So we were sailing actually the first night and um, off the coast of Northern Ireland and we were in a gale and I was at the, the helm and Simon poked up his head from the companionway with a cup of warm tea and he said, Megan, knock that smile off your face. You're not supposed to be smiling. You're supposed to be afraid. Have respect for the sea. And uh, that caught my attention. Um, but honestly, I, I had never felt that alive and and safe before. Um, so I, I knew there was something going on in the background. Uh, my life would not be the same again. So we were sailing past the Belfast Lock and uh, out came these beautiful big old ships in the mist. And I looked at Simon and I said, what are these boats? And he said, well, let's, let's sail in closer. Let's get a closer look. I'll uh, see if I can maneuver the photos now. Um, for those of you that are watching and know me, I can hear you laughing <laughs> uh, at my computer literate skills. So here's um, uh, the Isle of Egg, which is up in Scotland here. And uh, now we will see more of Egg. And where I used to live down there past the stones. And that's the famous profile of egg seen from the mainland. And now this is our lovely uh, 40 foot catch that Simon invited me to sail on. Um, beautiful old boat, Lola, my first love. These are the boats that I'm referring to. So just imagine seeing these lovely vessels sailing out from the mist. And uh, Simon and I took that Lola and we sailed very close to these hulls. And I looked up and I saw these people and I thought, I want to be one of those people. How do I do that? Um, so that's, that's how it started. Um, yeah. I have been very fortunate and over the last decade I've gotten to sail all around the world on vessels such as the Christian Roddick out of Norway and the Bark Europa from the Netherlands. Um, here's another shot of Europa. Um, what I've realized over the decade is uh, the sailing is what speaks to my spirit, but ha but meeting all of these different people and the different cultures and seeing how much we have to share with each other and teach each other is uh, something that I want to pass on. Um, here's Easter Island. Uh, this was a uh, passage through the Northwest Passage. Um, 
that is worth another uh, seminar presentation all in itself, but I thought it's worth noting. Uh, if you can zoom in on that, that photo there with the, uh, the route, uh, we started in the Pacific Ocean along the Aleutian chain here and went north through the Bering Sea and down to Cambridge Bay and up to uh, Baffin Bay and um, across to Norway. This is the boat. We took a 70 foot schooner steel. Saw some polar bears along the way, many actually. And I was very grateful for an engine. Uh, they will eat you if they can. Um, now back down into the tropics. Um, yes, it's a very big world. That's a pretty cool photo of some of the students. Yeah, so um, all of these experiences, um, I have many stories I could tell you. I've chosen to pick three. And uh, I'll start by saying, um, the last 10 years uh, and sailing on these different vessels, um, it really has taught me that um, you never stop learning if you stay open to it. And um, one of the hardest things I've ever done is sail on the Bark Europa. So uh, this is a 131 foot bark. Um, she uh, we sailed from Sao Paulo, Brazil, all the way around Cape Horn against the prevailing winds and the currents up to the Magellan Straits to Punta Arenas, Chile. And uh, what we found was down south of, of the Horn here, um, it was actually flat calm when I was stood down from my watch. So. To back up, uh, these sail training vessels, they are constantly sailing. Um, we do not stop in the night. We, we sail for 24 hours a day, seven days a week until we get to where we're going. So uh, that means that the passengers on board and the crew, the professional crew are a part of the watch standing system. On this particular vessel, we stood eight hours on, eight hours off, four hours on, four hours off. And that's how we did it for about eight weeks. Um, so I was being stood down from my watch. It was a gorgeous day. Something like this. This is the Drake Passage. Pretty flat. Looks like a pond. Um, and uh, yeah, I had a t-shirt on. Um, I was ready to go to sleep. At this stage, I think we had been sailing for four weeks and uh, um, I knew we were told that the weather could change. So at this um, point of the trip, I was just going to bed with, with my clothes on and uh, that I would be standing watch with the next, uh, the next time I was awake. So um, I fell asleep quite quickly. And the next moment I remember uh, being woken up by a big thud and uh, and the cabin was dark and I jumped out of bed, literally um, grabbed my harness and my, my knife and uh, went up on deck to something that looked more like this um, with some snow, actually. It was, we were in a full blizzard. Um, and I remember trying to get my harness on <laughs> and the wind was so strong that I was trying to leap through the holes of of my harness to get it up and over me. Uh, I just had that woolly jumper on and um, I knew we had to get these sails down. So I went to the shrouds and uh, put my hands on them and they were already starting to get the ice cold feeling. And I just said to myself, stay on the boat, <laughs> hold on. And up we went. Uh, this gives you an idea takes a lot of people to maneuver a ship in any stage, whether it's flat, calm, or blowing a gale. 
that's a whole part of the experience um, and lesson it takes a group of people working together. Uh, I want to show you a video that gives you an idea of um, the sea state and uh, put you put you there. Yeah, so uh, these moments are real. Uh, let's see if I can get out of there and go to the next photo. Yeah. Um, so this is a completely different day and moment, but um, what's, what is so uh, black and white uh, uh, on sea is is that these experiences are so so real and so in the moment it keeps you very much present um people ask me often what is it like to be in a storm and um and i've been in a few but the way i explain it is that uh, your body takes over and, and you start to prioritize what you need to do in the moment. And I just often think, what if we could always live that way? <laughs> so here I am teaching one of the voyage crew how to, um, looks like furl uh, a sail. So to put the sail to bed, tie it tight up on that yard. Um, so that it stays folded, if you will, uh, so it doesn't hang loose um, when we don't need those sails. That's a close up. Oh, here's another video. This is me teaching a student how to do it. And uh, yeah, I, I enjoy being aloft. Have a look. Yay. Yep, uh, that's that's what I that's what I like to do. Um, so that um, you're looking at, we're about 120 feet off off the deck of the boat, uh, somewhere down in the Drake Passage. We're making our way to Antarctica. Okay, let's see if I can do it. Photo. Yes, penguins. Uh, so we made it to Antarctica. Uh, that is the Bark Europa. Um, she is a lovely vessel. She's out there now, making her way back south to the peninsula. And it's a great, great thing to be able to say that. Um, so yes, we, we made the journey across. And uh, honestly, um, Antarctica is one of those places that I, I truly believe we, we really shouldn't be there, humans. I think we should leave it alone. Some more penguins. So the, the animals there, they come up to you because they haven't been hunted for over the last hundred years or so. So they're not afraid, unlike being up in the Arctic, where they're very, they're very afraid. There we are. We got to sail in that little ice cave. Well, not sail motor. Um, it, it's a big iceberg. There's a big iceberg. <laughs> uh, there's me. 
with emperor penguins. Those, that's all those little black and white dots in the background. Oh, this is a good quick story. So see this little iceberg here, maybe you can see the arrow. Um, uh, that's what I got to learn how to push boat against. So the Zodiac, I got to learn how to uh, push that bit of ice around. And that was my learning. First learning how to drive a, a push boat. Some humpback whales, beautiful creatures. There's the frozen rigging, some icicles hanging off. And there's the good bark Europa at night. Okay, uh, so that's a bit of, um, yeah, a bit of dramatic sea stories, but it's not always that way. Um, uh, now I got to sail on a 70 foot schooner from, where did we start? Port Mont, Chile, all the way across to Australia. Took a while. Uh, we did stop uh, a few times. One of the most special places I've ever visited in my life is uh, Vanuatu. And we went to the island called Santa Maria and um, I still think about the family I got to spend some time with. Uh, there's the boat, the vessel there. Uh, Abel Tasman is her name. So uh, I wanted to bring up this experience because yes, the sailing is beautiful and uh, speaks to my spirit and challenges me every day, uh, but it's also the people that I meet along these trips during these passages that leave impressions on me. <laughs> There's Betsy Ann, the, the eldest sister and her siblings. Uh, I got to live with them and uh, that just happened because I, I took that Zodiac to shore and uh, the boat we needed the extra space on board for um, some of the people visiting to sleep on the boat. So someone needed to sleep ashore. So I volunteered, of course. So I went to shore and I've never been there before. I never met these folks. And uh, I just pulled the Zodiac up onto the beach and found a bit of rocks there. And these young, Children were playing and picking these nuts off of the trees down by the water's edge. And they came closer to me and they started to feed me these nuts. And I felt like I was a little pet chipmunk. My cheeks kept getting full. <laughs> they were good nuts. <clears throat> I do remember, I don't know what they were, but they were good. <laughs> um, Betsy Ann spoke some English. And so uh, I asked her, um, can I, is there someone or somewhere I could stay? And she quickly just said, come visit my family, meet my family. Um, and the rest is history, history. This is the boat, we like to play some music during the off hours. Uh, the fiddle, um, the fiddle I took ashore with me and the father um, uh, pointed to my fiddle and, and asked me, you know, could I play? What is it? What is it actually? Uh, they had never seen the fiddle before, or heard of the music from that instrument. So the school children were all uh, finishing for the summer and the entire village was outside in this field uh, a village of around a hundred or more people. Everyone was there watching the children perform um, to do a show in a way before the school was done for the summer. And then they, they asked me to play the fiddle. So I stood in the middle of that field and uh, I still can hear the silence and feel the eyes of that entire village staring at me and my instrument 
talk about pressure. Um, <laughs> so I played a tune and uh, yeah, you could hear, you could hear the ants crawling under the grass beneath my feet. It was so quiet. And I mentioned this before, but there was no applause. It just was silent after I played. And I found that remarkable. Um, because everyone was intently watching and very present. And yeah, that was special. Uh, this is the chief of the village and some of the, the children, and I brought them to the boat and down below, and uh, we all hung out. And yeah, different worlds. The same world, but from very different places. Uh, this is part of one of the, the homes right on the water's edge. So, um, oh, yeah. Oh, uh, one more story from Vanuatu. So the fish. Um, so I'm sitting down there by the water's edge and uh, just looking out and at sea. We're, we're getting ready to go, uh, make our way to Australia uh, through the Great Barrier Reef. But before we left, I'm sitting there and uh, this woman came down and she walked into the water here and she turns and she's only in about up to her waist and now she's looking at me and she kind of gives me a a nod and she starts to make this motion with her hands on the sea this the surface of the water and she's moving the water and now she's blowing the surface of the water with her mouth, making this sound like <laughs> <laughs> And I'm thinking, wow, what, what's, what's happening? And then she, she has a fish, a good sized fish in her hand. And then seconds later, another fish, two fish. <laughs> and she walks out of the water. She looks at me, nods. She walks up into her home. And that's, that's her dinner, lunch, breakfast. I, yeah, amazing. Um, I asked Betsy Ann, the nine-year-old, do you know how to do that? And she said, yes, Megan, all, all of the women uh, are taught that on, on our island. That is what the women of our island are taught how to do. Wow. <laughs> okay, the next. Oh, this is a good one. Experience, education, empowerment. Right. Uh, so through these passages and on these different voyages and sailboats uh, and the people and all of this, this is what I'm gathering is what I'm supposed to do with the next big chunk of my life is provide this platform, a vessel for young people to experience hands-on what it is to be alive in the moment, to be responsible for themselves and their, their shipmates, to do things that they never thought they could. Um, I see this time and time again through these sail training vessels that I've worked on, that they are truly life-changing. Uh, this is on the core with Kramer. Uh, I've been very grateful to have worked and still I'm working for a sea semester, Sea Education Association, based out of Woods Hole, Massachusetts. Um, the organization has two vessels, one on the Atlantic side, one on the Pacific. And uh, we take students out offshore, uh, thousands of nautical miles for about six weeks. And they learn how to operate the ship 
And more importantly, they learn who they are. This is me teaching, looks like a whipping. Um, these skills are important. They can save lives. Um, through all of this, there are so many ways to come to the same place, but um, I, I find this type of work, this is what inspires me and my enthusiasm rubs off on these students and uh, vice versa. Oh, this is a good one. This is all of our produce. So before we leave port uh, for about a day, a full day, we bring aboard all of our food and we lay it out on deck and uh, let it dry. And then we individually wrap most of what you're looking at here um, so that it stays preserved. On these vessels, we're feeding up to 40 to 60 people, depending on the boat, for seven to eight weeks at a time. So paying attention to detail is quite significant, not only for you, but for others. This is the spirit of New Zealand, another gorgeous boat. Um, I got to work on her on and off uh, a few different times down in New Zealand. And uh, yeah, I, I really respect their program and how they run things. They, they give a lot of, uh, well, uh, what's the word? They have a long tether in a way. Um, for example, they put maybe six to seven students in a small little lugger, a little day sail boat, like a 14 footer, uh, with a tiny little laminated chart, a red flag and a horn and say, off you go, <laughs> figure it out. Um, I, I've, I like that very much. Uh, this is the US Brig Niagara built in 1812. Uh, as you can see, uh, it takes a lot of humans to, to do something well. Uh, this, for example, what we're doing here is uh, putting a nice tidy harbor furl into the course. And that is a heavy sail. Um, yep. <laughs> what a beautiful boat. So many lines. Uh, some of you out there are my dear shipmates. This is one of them, uh, Sarah Van Der Lees. And uh, yes, well, when you have these experiences, you, you are changed forever. And you would give your life for these people. And it goes both ways. Uh, here we're back on the Kramer, pulling in the mainsail sheet. We're probably about to tack or jibe. Um, yep, doing some more teaching, probably saying something about paying attention to situational awareness. <laughs> Having that 360 degree peripheral vision, very important anywhere on land or at sea. Uh, we do find time for music, which is always amazing uh, to play a tune while you're sailing underway. Some of the best moments of my life. We're going aloft here. I try to, as often as I can, uh, encourage the students to go aloft, to see a different perspective, um, to be up high and to look out at the horizon. And also to show them what I, what I do up there. It's not always to enjoy the view. There's work to be done as well. A lot of the ship, most of it exists up high. You have to be paying attention to what, what needs to be maintained and so forth. Yeah. <laughs> More celebrations. Yeah, and one of the best things to do is when we are 
a thousand or more nautical miles offshore and the weather's right to be able to go for a swim and float in the ocean and to look up at this 134 foot brigantine and realize that it's it's your home that 40 other people are also living on this small boat it gives gives everyone a great perspective which brings us to ocean's dream so um what i love about the sailing and the education is just that it it teaches so many of us that we are so much more than we think we are and that we're in this together um it occurred to me i've, I've been thinking about this for over a decade and gathering shipmates and other people on land and planting seeds with folks saying, don't be surprised if I ring you up or send you an email, contact you in the near future, because when the time is right, um, there will be a group of us working together to make something very important happen. Um, so here we have Ocean Stream. Um, I have asked myself, is this what I love? Being at sea for months at a time and it's not all sunsets and sunrises and romantic moments. Um, it's real life and it's challenging and it's hard. And you don't have a lot of privacy. Sometimes it's just the little curtain that's strung up along your bunk. Um, for a moment of privacy and um, you've been standing on watch for six hours in the pouring rain hopefully it's a warm tropical rain sometimes it's not sometimes it's a blizzard um, and maybe you're injured and you're watching your shipmates work harder now because you can't because you have to heal well <laughs> it is what I love because it's empowering. It's dear to my heart. And it's life changing. <laughs> so I truly believe that we create our future. And with Ocean Stream, we will, we will try to be a positive influence for many, many people. And as you can see, I am deeply touched by this dream. Um, that's, that's mostly the, the content of my presentation that I wanted to share with all of you tonight. Uh, if, if there are any questions, um, I can't see them because... <laughs> it's okay. If I, I invite everyone now to, if you have questions for Megan, please go ahead and type them into the Q&A box and I will read them aloud. And Megan, oh, do you <laughs> like to leave up the uh, Ocean Stream screen or if you want to return to um, the talking head version? So entirely up to you. Uh, but yes, everyone, please note that uh, Ocean Stream's website is where you can find out a lot more information about this program. And of course, I know that Megan is happy to answer any questions right now. Um, while we wait for a few questions to come into the chat, into the Q and A box, uh, Megan, I, yeah. I noticed a lot of a lot of girls and women in the photographs, and I was a little bit surprised about that. I didn't realize that there were so many. Um, women who are turning to this line of work, who are turning to this more typically, um, you know, uh, labor intensive occupation. Is this something that you're seeing more and more of? And do you hope to inspire women with Ocean's Dream? 
Um, the profession I've chosen is in the, the old traditional sailing vessel uh, niche in the maritime field. And in my experience in this particular field, uh, there have been many capable and able women uh, serving the merchant mariner role as captains, mates, engineers, stewards, uh, scientists. Um, so my profession is just one of, of many in this field, the maritime field. So uh, I can't speak for all of the, uh, the big industry as a whole. Uh, my hope is that these opportunities are given to everyone. Uh, as a woman, I, I honestly, when I show up to work, I, I show up as Megan and I try to do my best. Um, if I can inspire other people, uh, women and men alike, uh, and humans in general, to do a good job no matter what they're doing, then great. <laughs> but even more than doing a job, it's actually what I want to do with my life is inspire people to live their life, the one that they were meant to live. Thank you. Um, we have a number of questions that came in, so I'm going to go ahead and jump right into those. Uh, so mostly people are wanting to hear more about Ocean's Dream and, um, and what is your vision for that? So what exactly are we talking about with this new nonprofit? <laughs> well, um, the vision is to, in a simple statement, connect people with themselves and with nature by providing a, a platform to do that on. Um, being able to take a group of humans out to sea, it, you're immediately in, in your own bubble, if you will. And it's very apparent very quickly that whatever you've left with after you've cut the, the mooring lines, let go, of your lines, um, whatever you have on that vessel, whether it's internal or the food you've brought or forgotten, um, that's all you've got. So uh, it uh, it cuts away all the crap <laughs> very quickly. You realize what's important, um, and if you don't, you will. Are you, are you looking to um, recreate the some of the experiences that you've had in a sense that you're hoping to do this aboard a traditionally rigged ship? Uh, Ocean's Dream is looking at purchasing a 75 foot steel schooner and sailing out of the Pacific Northwest mainly. So being based in the San Juan Islands, uh, just north of Seattle and taking 16 to 21 year old students for two to five week voyages, depending, um, and teaching them, yes, about sailing, teaching them about marine science, uh, but above all teaching them about who they are and what they're capable of, of being. Um, and that we are the stewards for this, this planet. So um, yes, we have a lot to do. Uh, Nicole has a question about the work you've done in the past. She says the boats that you travel and work on, what is their business? Is it tourism? No, no, it's not, uh, not, not mainly. Uh, the boats I've chosen to work on is education, uh, educational vessels. Um, it's beautiful or it uh, attracts a lot of students and um, adults because of the locations that the destinations that we go to so that that is appealing to many to commit to spending the five to eight weeks with us uh, but along these journeys we are are educating the students um, about nautical sciences 
um, they're actually earning college credit through their universities when they are with us. So, um, uh, yeah, it's it's not a holiday. Um, Sandy wants to know, first of all, she says, excellent presentation. And she wants to know if you've ever been aboard or sailed on a wind powered schooner like the Shenandoah out of uh, Vineyard Haven, Massachusetts. Hmm. Uh, I've I sailed past her. <laughs> Um, and I've seen her out there, but um, not particularly that the Shenandoah, no, no, but she's a beauty. Um, Nicole wants to know, where is home for you? How long do you spend on land each year? <laughs> Nicole, that is an excellent question. Um, eh, yeah, where is my home? Well, my heart of hearts is in the Isle of Egg in the Hebrides, uh, Western Isles, Scotland. Uh, the jury's still out on that. It's a big world. I'm still trying to stay open to other possibilities, but um, I don't get there very often. Um, I don't spend much time on land. This is, in fact, the first time in I don't know how many years, I think seven to ten years that I've had a, a land job. So I technically am a captain for a sailboat um, and I am not on the ocean 14 hours every day, but I sleep on land. I have a car I'm, I'm borrowing from a friend. So I consider that um, I'm, I'm living on land right now, but soon I will be offshore again. Looking forward to it. Marcy has a great question. She says, initially, how did you find ships to be on when you first began your sailing career? And how did you know what you wanted to do? Yeah. Well, uh, it all comes back to that first night in the off the Irish Sea in the gale and the hot cup of tea and Simon telling me to have respect for the ocean. Um, <laughs> I just I just knew that was something tapped me on the shoulder and I I had to figure out how to be on the water. Um, and so um, I. I am a doer. Uh, I don't do well reading books, that's for certain. So I just went for it. And in fact, friends of mine bought me a um, 25 foot wooden uh, boat and I learned how to fix her up and uh, I sailed her from the Bristol Channel all the way back to Scotland. Um, yeah, some, when you know, you know, and uh, that's not to say it's easy. I was going to say, has anything ever, maybe even in the beginning, anything ever extraordinarily scary happened to you while you were out at sea that made you think, okay, maybe this isn't for me in the early days? Absolutely. Still does. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. <laughs> but uh, another dear shipmate recently just said, I think that's, that's when you know you're doing what you're supposed to do, right? <laughs> I feel like that every time I turn on this camera to do these programs. Yeah. <laughs> scared yeah. every time. That's I, right. There's a fun question. Laura wants to know, what sort of wildlife have you seen from the boats? You, you did get to show us a few images already, but can you talk a little bit more about the wildlife that you've encountered? Uh, yeah, it's incredible, the list. If I actually were to be you know, strict enough and sit down and write, what I've seen uh, would be very long, uh, but um, off the top of my head, um, oh, so many different species of whale. I've yet to see the, the big one, the blue whale, but um, so many whale. Um, yeah, the penguins, incredible walrus. I've seen some walrus, uh, bears, many different bears, grizzly, uh, brown, black, and uh, the polar bear, uh, the fish, uh, so many beautiful fish, and the corals, uh, manta rays, sea turtles, dolphin seals, the uh, leopard seals, they'll eat you, <laughs> don't get close to them. Um, so many birds. I, I mean, it's, it's incredible, the, the oceans are, are full of life. That's the beauty of it when you're just sailing along this 
this platform, there's there's constant life happening underneath the vessel at all times. And when something emerges from the water, it reminds me there's a whole world below. Mm. Um, so for those of us, again, who don't do as much sailing as we would like, uh, we hear a lot of lore about sailing. And Mary Jane asks, is there any type of ceremony when you cross the equator or the international dateline? Oh, yes. You're not really supposed to talk about it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but there is, yes. The short answer is yes. There definitely is, depending on the vessel you are on. Uh, will determine how strict and fast they are to holding upholding those um, traditions. Ah, okay. Um, <laughs> so we do want, um, there are, are several people who have questions about Ocean's Dream and the financing and how the financing will work for this. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that and how people can support Ocean's Dream if they're interested? Oh, yes. Yes, we, we need some financing. <laughs> Uh, so to the best way, honestly, is, um, to write down this, uh, website address here and click the donate button. Um, if you really want to donate a lump sum, a big portion, then, um, contact me directly. My, my information is also on the website and, um, yeah, yeah, we, we do need the money and, uh, for both the vessel, but also the startup cost um, to begin uh, with a strong platform. And that's very important. Um, we hope to exist for many moons to come. So um, that's what we're doing now is the homework, um, figuring out all the, the different aspects of a nonprofit and, uh, and how to best fundraise. We, we had a crowdfunding uh, platform uh, last month in July for six weeks and we we did raise a good chunk of change so that's a good start um, but if if you believe in what we are doing and if this has rung a little bell or touched your heart then um, let us know uh, speaking of touching our hearts, a lot of the stories that you told did certainly touch mine. And um, one of our, our viewers tonight, Robert, says, uh, did you go to the Marquesas? My visit there in 1979 taught me about humanity. Taking, uh, taken into the heart of a family, learned that tipping, like applause, is rude. Did you get a chance to visit the Marquesas? Not yet, Robert. <laughs> but I, I will. I'll get there. Yeah. Yeah, not not yet. Um, let's see. So um, you had talked about the Ocean Stream uh, website. Uh, do you also have um, any sort of social media or other ways, uh, newsletters yeah. that people can stay up to date with the progress and, and what's happening and growing with the organization? Yeah, we certainly do. We have all of that. Uh, we're on Instagram. So just look for oceansdream.ed. Uh, you'll find us there. We're on Facebook. Um, same thing, Ocean Stream. And we do have a newsletter uh, that I'm due to write for this upcoming month. So um, the best way, let's see, maybe one of my fellow board members can tell me how to make that connection between if people want to sign up for the newsletter. Maybe it's on the website. Um, but yeah, yeah, all, all of these things exist and uh, word of mouth is a great way. Um, Sharing the recording of the program tonight, which we will, yes. uh, we will put on the Camden Public Library Program's YouTube channel. Uh, I'll yeah. edit out that little beginning blip part, Megan, don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. It'll be nice gonna, and smooth. <laughs> I'm gonna um, exit the, uh, let's see if I can, I wanna see if I can, oh, maybe I won't do it. Okay, never mind. You can hit stop share if you want, and it'll go back to the regular thing. But yes, yeah, so I will be putting the recording of this program tonight on the Camden Public Library Program's YouTube channel. Uh, and I encourage you to share it with other people because it's a beautiful story and it's an exciting project that you have. And I know other people are going to be interested as well. Um, that was all, those were all the questions we had tonight, Megan. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I did want to mention to folks who are with us this evening, if you enjoy maritime stories and maritime history and learning about, um, 
such things as we've spoken of tonight. We are going to be having um, a wonderful speaker, Charles Lagerbaum. He is an author, he's a maritime historian. He will be doing a talk for us on October 5th on Zoom. So if you're interested in that, it's gonna be about his brand new book called Maine to Cape Horn, The World's Most Dangerous Voyage. One mm -hmm. that you have taken, Megan, so kudos. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And as we saw from some of your video, it looks pretty dangerous. Um, so sometimes, I'm, yeah, sometimes, not always, not always. Um, so we'll hear a little bit about uh, about um, Charles's version of it because he went down there as well, and the history of Mainers taking that route and exploring. All right, this has been very interesting and and just absolutely lovely to meet you. We both got to actually do this at the library today. So um, it's unusual for me to be in the same building as my presenter these days. So this has been fun. Um, thank you again, everyone. And I encourage you to learn more about Megan's organization at oceanstream.org. And please visit librarycamden.org for all the latest information about our programs and everything going on at the library. And with that, I wish you all a good night. Thank you.